Welcome back to another Mobile Centrics Tips and Tricks. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you a repair specifically on an Apple Watch SE second gen. Now this repair pertains to the NFC and specifically the NFC connector. Now the NFC is a critical component when it comes to things like Apple Pay. And many of you might know that if you replace the entire display on an Apple Watch, you lose that function. And therefore you might have been transferring the NFC. In this particular case though, this screen popped off, and when it did so, it damaged the connector on the NFC. So I'm going to quickly show you how I repair that, along with some tips and tricks that hopefully you find useful in your day-to-day -day repairs. Let's get into the video. As you can see, this connector has seen quite a bit of strain. It's popped up here on the left side, and the second pad in from the left you can see is missing. I'm going to add some isopropyl alcohol to help loosen the adhesive, and I'm also going to just break these legs and push out the actual flap portion of the connector. Because this melts, so I'd like to have a backup just in case the replacement breaks. We'll dry up the alcohol and add some flux. And taking my soldering iron, I'm going to carefully go on each one of these pins and pop it away from the solder pad. That way I'm not applying too much heat to this NFC. I'd like to keep the amount of time that I have a heat source on this NFC minimal. And as I do this with each one of the pins, eventually this entire connector will simply pop off the board. The last one here on the front row, I'll add some flux to the top. And we'll go on with the soldering iron, kind of pushing these ones down and letting them slide out the bottom one at a time, patiently. Given that this component is so small and this connector is so small, the last thing I want to do is damage one more of these pads. So I really am going to just take my time pulling each one of these pins off so that I don't pull another pad. Because as you can see, that pad down there on the bottom left I will have to rebuild it. It won't be too complicated because there is a test point right there that I can tie into along with the trace but uh, it's just one more of those would make this a little bit trickier. Just gonna go and make sure all of these pads are good touching with the iron they all look like they're secure. They should be good on the back row there. And here's a closer up look of that missing part. I'm gonna scrape away the end here and where it ties into and also the trace leading up to the test point. I give myself a couple anchor points for the new pad that I'm going to build here in a second. Got a brand new scalpel uh, blade here that helps me scrape right through that top paint layer getting down at the trace. Here I'm going to grab a new uh, pad, little pad builder here that I have. I'm going to add some solder paste. This makes uh, working with these little pad rebuilds much easier. I'm going to make sure I tin up that the new pad pretty well. And with some tweezers, I'm going to hold it in place as I go down with the iron and really tack it in place to get it to set up nice and solid. There. It's now tacked on the top, on the bottom. Now I'm just going to add some reinforcement to the tester point here, and we'll get this to stay nice and secure. Also fluff up each one of the other surrounding pads so that it receives solder much easier when I go to solder on the new connector. There we go. We'll add some more solder paste to the other pads that need it up in the top row. We're going to really fluff all of these up so that we get a nice uh, solid joint with the new connector. Now, all of these pads at the bottom are pretty straightforward, but the ones at the top, both left and right, big pads are grounding pads, so they kind of take more solder than, than uh, what I would like. But I'm still going to add some solder to them so they have the same type of solder on them, or at least mixed into them. And I'm just going to go over all of them, making sure they have about the same same amount of solder. I'll take some wick, I'm going to wick away a little bit of the grounding pads just so they're not too elevated and then we'll cut off the remaining trace on our, our fix on our pad repair. We'll clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol and a brush 
making sure that our new trace doesn't pop away. If you're liking what you see, then smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And there we go. Looking good, so I'm going to get our new connector, and I'm actually going to steal this from a broken display. These connectors are, aren't something that are readily available, but I do enough watches that this isn't something that I don't have access to. Adding isopropyl alcohol, I'll be able to carefully remove the sticker. We'll pull it away so that we have access to the, a clean connector. And I do need to save this connector, so I'm going to be extra careful here when prying out these little arms that hold the little uh, swivel points for the actual connector itself. So I won't break them, but I'm going to push them out as I carefully slide out the flap to the SIF connector. Just like that on that side, and we'll do the other side the same way. And just in case I break this one, I do have the other one that I pulled that we can use. There we go. Pop that one out. Okay. The reason I do that is because I'm going to be heating this up and that will definitely melt as the plastic is much more, it's much less heat resistant than the rest of the plastic of this connector. And we'll dry off the isopropyl alcohol and we'll get ready for the extraction of this connector. Now this process can be done really with any device. Anytime you're replacing one of these type of connectors or even any any connector that has plastic and metal, as long as you take your time and you've got the right temperature and flow, then you're going to be okay. I'm going to set my rework station to around 350 degrees Celsius. and I'm going to take the airflow significantly lower uh, than normal just to get an even heat across this without burning any of the plastic. And now that it's up to temperature, I'm going to give it a little nudge. We're going to see that we have movement. So I will be able to push this so that it clears any of the pads so it's not stuck down to anything. Just been gently nudging it down. I don't want to deform it in any way, so I'm really going to take my time here. Just like that. And this guy as well. The other one was looking pretty dingy, so I'm going to steal him and replace him as well when I replace the connector. This guy's a little stuck on there, so I'm going to take the heat back. Not exactly sure why he's stuck, but I don't want to damage him, so we'll just take the heat back to him and gently lift him off. Or even let the air blow him away as soon as he's released. We just got to make sure we don't lose him. Things should be back up to temperature now, and yep, there it goes. All right, back to the NFC that we are trying to fix. What we're going to do is add some flux to both the top and bottom rows. We're going to be really light on the flux because we don't want the new connector to float too high above the surface. So I'm going to carefully smear the flux with tweezers here on both top and bottom, making sure we've got good coverage on all of them so we don't get any oxidation when we're soldering on the uh, new connector. I'm going to take our new connector and we'll line it up and take our time to get a perfect alignment with the pads. We're going to touch each side of this and it'll melt the solder under the legs there. And the trick that I found if it doesn't automatically take is to add some solder paste. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll add some solder paste here on the, on the metal itself. And our soldering iron will help heat it up equally and help uh, lift it off the uh, back of the NFC. And with enough uh, heat, we should be able to get it to pop off just like that. To make a new one solder on easier, I'm going to add a teeny amount of solder paste to both them. And we'll grab our new one and stick it right on top of that. And that'll flow into place while we are flowing the uh, connector back on. So now let's turn our attention to making sure that it's lined up again perfectly. And looks like we need to push it a little to the left play around with it for a minute, taking my time. Got all the time in the world to get this lined up. No need to rush it. All right, we'll come in with the heat and we're gonna watch very carefully as the solder starts to melt, both under the connector and also under the points for the antenna. And once things start to melt, it'll all start to happen really fast. As you can see, some of the solder is starting to melt on those pins, and it immediately will grab and pull down that connector. There we go. You can see them kind of pop into place. I'm going to give it a little nudge to agitate it a little bit, line this guy up a little bit better. 
really making sure we get a nice flow on there. There we go with that guy, and the connector should be solid as well. All right, it's been a few 30 seconds or so, so I'm going to cool it down with some isopropyl alcohol. And we'll brush away any of the flux, leaving a nice clean surface that we can double check our work on. Blow off the alcohol there, and let's take a look at uh, from a good angle, see if we've got nice solid joints here on this connector. Let's zoom down on in there, and as you can see, we've got really nice solid joints between all of those pads, including the fixed one with those pins here on this side. Everything's perfectly aligned, which is great. And then let's look at the back side. And that looks really solid as well. Perfect. We don't have to go in with a soldering iron at all. This is perfect. And the last step before completing this repair is going to be putting back the flap portion of the connector. Let's flip that around to the proper orientation and we'll click it in. You have to line it up with the pins and push it on through and as you do so the arms will kind of expand out slightly allowing the uh, uh, peg portions to clip into the plastic. This definitely requires a little bit of patience. I can feel it kind of slide down on that side. Let's work our way down to the other side and push it in gently. There you can even see the arm kind of expanding outwards and then let's get it to click in. There it goes. Make sure the other side's good. Those are nicely compressed. We should be able to push the flap down now and not have it pop out or anything weird. So there we go. That is how to replace a connector and also fix a pad on the NFC on an Apple Watch. Uh, this is definitely something that's needed. There's a cool little shot of one of the light sensors that actually looks through the display because the display is transparent if you weren't aware of that on these Apple Watches. Now we just need to go back in and install it and finish the repair. And you can see the difference between this beat up one, obviously with solder on it now, I'm glad that I replaced this as well, even though this other one probably would have worked. Going that extra mile is always, you know, if you can, why not? And there you go. A quick, not so simple repair, but it'll definitely ensure that this watch has the functions that correspond to the NFC. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe for more future videos like this. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.